ultimatebeliever.com forward slash sounddoctrine.pdf. This is going to be quick, for real. For real this time. Somebody put a comment on, <laughs> on YouTube this morning because I put a 20-something minute message up there from the, remember Solid, from the men's meeting. And um, somebody put a comment. It's the first time you said it was going to be short, and it really was short. <laughs> it's like... When I say short, shorter than normal. That's what I mean. Amen. Adamantbeliever.com. Did it pull up? Sounddoctrine.pdf. Yes, sir. All right. We're going to get right into this. Did I have anything else? Was that anything else? Is that it? Okay. The difference between biblically sound doctrine and all of the false doctrines is that sound doctrine addresses our behavior. This is the reason people are opting for foolish doctrines. This is why people are becoming Hebrew Israelites. Black Hebrew Israelites. Amen. Guys want to have more than one wife. That's what they teach. Y'all didn't know that? That's their doctrine. I've had multiple women, multiple, come to me and tell me, hey, you know, I thought I wanted to be a black Hebrew Israelite, but now, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's not addressing behavior. But biblically sound doctrine always dresses, addresses behavior. Our behavior. Do you know that sinful behavior leads to dysfunction? Yeah. Yeah. God is trying to save you from a dysfunctional life. By checking your behavior with biblical doctrine. Is everybody sleepy? Amen. Let me see how crowded we are. If we need to proceed with this building because they keep coming up with costs, Walter, that just making me want to change my mind. And Brian done got to where he just sent me drive-by text. Oh, pastor, it's going to cost this much. And then I don't hear from him for like three days. <laughs> Man. Okay, it's still crowded. All right. Well, amen. We'll proceed. We had an eldest breakfast yesterday. We was talking about it. Man, you know, I, I just, just because you have the money don't, need, don't mean you're supposed to spend it. That's just my motto in life. Just because you have it don't mean you just throw it away. Amen. <laughs> hey, Let me start over. I done got vexed. <laughs> I done vexed myself. <laughs> the difference between <laughs> biblically sound doctrine and all of the false doctrines is that sound doctrine addresses our behavior. God insists that acceptable behavior be taught as doctrine. And required when functioning in the kingdom of God. Amen. You don't teach your own behavior in God's house. You don't teach your behavior in God's house. You teach his requirement for our behavior. First Timothy 3 and 15. But if I tarry long. That thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. I know that by memory because every Sunday morning when we were doing a Sunday school, we had to repeat certain scriptures. And this was one of them. Paul telling Timothy, if I tarry long, meaning if I, if I, if I take my time getting there, he said, but I want y'all to know how thou art to behave thyself in the house of God. 
And they used to always make us say that so we would know how to behave ourselves. Amen. Amen. We knew you can't wear this to the house of God. Amen. 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 If it's sexy, you can't wear it to the house of God. Yeah. Yeah, because the house of God wasn't about you. So you don't go in there transmitting and taking the attention and focus off the Lord Jesus Christ. Tight dresses and The more illusion dresses. Yeah, we don't do all of that. Cleavage out. Amen. Bucket of cologne. Everybody smell like you on their way home. I hate that. You bought the value pack. <laughs> The sports bottle. <laughs> yeah, man, and the church ain't about that. I know you want a husband, but you don't need to be transmitting like that in God's house. Amen. I know you lifted a 45 pound dumbbell the other day, but bro, everybody don't need to see your newly formed biceps and pecs. You hugging chest first. <laughs> Amen. We were talking about that yesterday with the elders. I was telling them there's certain people that hug you and you know they're hugging you because you know it's church and love, love. And then there's other folks that hug you and they send in a message. Yes, sir. Right, yes, sir. Can I teach this in here? Yes. Yeah, I come over and tell my wife, hey, I don't like when she hugged me. Amen. You don't be falling into me. I'm going to let you fall. I'm a... Hey, Pastor. <laughs> that old melted taffy hood. You just, hey. Get off me. Amen. Amen. And what kind of husband let his wife act like that? It ain't the single women. I can say it ain't single town. They know how to behave themselves. You know, single town being good. They being good. They ain't doing nothing to mess up. Hey, <laughs> man. You got to sometimes, I told the elders yesterday, sometimes you got to take your wife and teach her how to hug. Amen. She might have grew up in the club. Mama was the DJ. She's standing right by the ones and twos. She grew up by the ones and the twos. She don't know nothing else. Mama was the DJ. <laughs> you have to know how to behave yourself in the house of God. Amen. Watch what you're wearing. Watch how you're acting. All of that. This is the house of God. This ain't your house. Yeah. And it's the church of who? Yeah. Meaning, the pillar and ground. This is the semen and the mortar of where the truth resides. No, God has never done away with his church because the church is the pillar and ground of the truth. Just because folks stay at home don't mean God is done with his church. Amen. The pandemic pushed folks out of church that shouldn't have never been in there. Uh-oh. Now I'm about to get real serious and upset some folks. Yes, folks are at home. They should be home. Anybody afraid to come to church, stay home. You're not supposed to be in here. That's where the warriors are. This is where the soldiers are. This is where the frontliners are. This is where the spiritual first responders are. We the ones out here fighting the devil. We the ones out here standing for the truth. You ain't supposed to be here. Stay home. We 
with your buffet of sermons, you got some tongs just picking. I'm going to take a little of what he said and a little of what he said. It's never been like that in the history of Christendom. God has never done that. He said, know those that labor among you. He's never taught people that way. That's abnormal. I'm preaching. I don't care. This is sound doctrine. Just in case you didn't know, let me read sound doctrine to you. The Bible illustrates sound doctrine. Here is sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. <laughs> this is it, man. This is it. And this is all there is. Yes, sir. When we add it, take it away. This is it. Titus 2 and 1. Speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Colon. Yeah. Meaning here it is. Here's the sound doctrine. Teach the older men to exercise what? Get yourself together, daddy. Yeah. Papa. Exercise self-control to be worthy of respect and to live how? Wisely. Wisely. That they, they must have strong faith and be filled with love and what? Patience. patience. So when you get there, don't forget how you get there. Got to keep love and patience because you ain't always been there. Yeah. Sound, look at somebody say sound doctrine. Yeah. Similarly, teach the older women. That's 40 and 50. 35 in some cases in here. Because we have so many young folks. See, the more young folks you have, you got a lower the age of old. That's true. The examples that they need get younger and younger. So teach the older women and quit trying to opt out of the older women category. You in there. Teach the older women to live in a way that is appropriate for someone to serve, someone serving the Lord. Live like you are serving the Lord. Amen. Take some of them Instagram pictures down. Those pictures aren't showing you serving the Lord. Amen. Take the jiggle, jiggle, jiggly, jiggly videos down. Nobody want to see you. That's not appropriate for someone serving the Lord. Amen. All your word for the days and positive words and all. Take it down. Nobody called you to do that. Amen somebody to a preacher a real preacher called of God Amen. and quit trying to grow a congregation of folks you can minister to online That's right. That's right. That's right. let me keep going we might not need that new building by the time I'm finished you know I'm trying to <laughs> teach the older, teach all the women to live in a way that is appropriate for someone that serves Lord. they must not go around speaking evil of others Quit gossiping about other people. Speaking evil about other folks. Somebody said, hearsay. Oh, I know. They said, somebody said. I, was you there? Well, no, but this is a reliable source. Shut up. They must not. This is sound doctrine, Elder. They must not go around speaking evil of others. And they must not be heavy drinkers. Yeah. Why did he say that? Because they go together. They go together. Because anybody, listen, let me explain why they, how they come together. Anybody talking about folks all the time hate their life. Their life is messed up. They talk about other folks' kids because their kids are messed up. They talk about other folks' husbands because their husbands messed up. They talk about other people because their life is Jack. And when your life is Jack, you need Jack. <laughs> That's how they go together. Jack make them feel better about what's jacked. That's what it is. That's why he put them together. He put them straight up together. Did he not put them together? Or be talking about people and drinking.
Can I keep preaching? Instead, they should teach others what is good. These same older women must train the young. See, you can't train the younger women if you ain't in line. So the older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children. It didn't say train them in the first book of John. It didn't say train them in ministry. It didn't say lay hands on them and pray for them and speak life into them and speak a better situation. Oh, I just see. It didn't say prophesy on them. No, it didn't. It said train them to love their husbands and children. Now, quote all the scriptures that have to do with that. That'll bless them. Look at somebody say, this is sound doctrine. To live wisely and be pure. To take care of their homes. To do good and to be submissive to their husbands. He gave you everything you're supposed to be teaching, older women. Anything you add to this, he didn't say. This is sound doctrine. Well, they're not married. Prepare them for marriage. Well, I'm not married. You prepare yourself for marriage. Then, if they do this stuff, they won't bring shame on the word of God. Look at somebody say, this is sound doctrine. In the same way, older men encourage the young men to live wisely in how much? All that they do. And you yourselves must be an example to them by doing good deeds of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of what you're teaching. And let your teaching be so correct that it can't be criticized. Now, trolls are going to criticize. What we'll talk about them? Those are folk with demons. Folks with demons are going to try to draw people away from truth. That's what they're supposed to do. That's what a demon does. But he's saying let your teaching be so correct that it can't be criticized, meaning that you are teaching the wrong stuff. Then those who want to argue will be ashamed because they won't have anything bad to say about us. Look at somebody say, this is sound doctrine. Sound doctrine conforms us to the gospel of Jesus Christ and changes our conduct. Amen. Amen. You was wilding. You was crazy. You got it together. You stopped because sound doctrine came for you. Jesus said, you got to stop acting like that. And he's saying, I still love you, but you the one going to be crying to him about the dysfunction you created because of your behavior. He don't want to hear that. Maybe we can stop that from happening. Salvation brings Christ into us and sound doctrine shapes us into his ways and thoughts so we can be what? Conformed to his image. Spiritually and naturally so we conform to his image spiritually and naturally yeah Jesus wasn't taking drugs in the natural he wasn't overeating yeah, he wasn't using food to make him feel better he wasn't using drugs to make him feel better he was living his life and doing what God said in the spirit it translated into peace in the natural we got to conform to them as that's what sound doctrine teaches us. Romans 8 and 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestined to conform to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So it was his plan all along for us to be conformed to the image of his son. Naturally and spiritually. He could have just came and died all in the same day. And gave us salvation. But he chose to live 33 years. To show us how to live and function. In the natural. How to treat our brothers and sisters. In the natural. Amen. Could you imagine how excited Jesus was. To teach the sermon on the mount. He had lived all that time up before that. I think he was 30 when he did the Son of the Mount. I could be wrong, but he was someone. But he lived all this time watching everybody do everything wrong. 
Could you imagine how he felt when he walked up on that mountain? He's like, okay, this is it. This is it. And he corrected everything that needed to be corrected. Yeah. And that's what sound doctrine does. The Bible said that people will heap on themselves teachers having itching ears. People will select performers that will tickle their ears or entertain them. People are so used to watching movies that they want church to be a movie. They're so used to watching reality TV that they want their life to be like a reality TV actor. Folks don't have a stomach, a desire for the truth because they're so used to lies. Reality TV is a lie. I've talked to folks that they made shows after. Reality shows. And they said, man, ain't none of that reality. I've seen folks I grew up with on their reality shows picking out the lies because I was there. I'd be telling somebody if I walk in, I thought, that's a lie. I was there. <laughs> Gonna keep preaching. People will select performers that will tickle their ears or entertain them. They allow false teachers to detain them and speak lies into them. Entertainment. I told y'all once before me and some baby went to this church and I had to preach and man, they had, this looked like a carnival. They had a dancer, an old gay dancer in the corner. He just... <laughs> Remember him? Had leotard on. A dude. Yeah, with the... With the, with the yeah. I hope he fall off the high wire. He's in that... Just, in the, he's in one corner. In the other corner, another lady just... She was doing sign language. I over-exaggerated. I, I embellished a little. She was doing sign language. That's what it looked like. <laughs> was she miming or what, what was she doing? She was miming. <laughs> Stupid. Then there's another lady. I'm preaching the message. Yeah, dude, back a painting. He's painting the colors of the words that were being spoken. He's insane. He's insane. You have to be insane to do that. I ain't preaching no colors. I'm preaching the word. Word that's red for the blood. What if you get? And the worst one. I got through preaching. And by the time I finish preaching, I'm preaching a serious message, condemning everything in there to hell. But don't bring me. I talked about everything. So I'm preaching. And I get through and everybody bust out laughing. Just busted out laughing. Ah, yeah. So I'm like, if this is the spirit of laughter junk, <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Get my check. But everybody just bust out laughing. Ah, and I said, what is everybody laughing at? And somebody said, look, look behind you. I looked on the screen and I guess the anointed caricature person had drew me and put it on the screen at the end of the sermon. A caricature of me. I said, we are at Barnum and Bailey. This is the greatest show on earth. Mega church pastor. He's the leader of a bunch of churches crazy oh that was some foolishness i looked around i said it's time to go that's a true story I said, where are we as i whispered to, where are we where is the where did we make a wrong turn For the, <laughs> for the time will come, did I read all of this? Yeah, people will select performers. They, they allow false teachers to detain them and speak lies into them. That's the definition of entertain. 2 Timothy 4 and 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, 
but after their own lust, they're going to heap upon themselves teachers having itching ears. Meaning the pe it's going to get to the place where the people are going to pick their own prophets. See, it used to be God would call men to preach the word. And people would start churches and different things and the people would come. And the pastor would talk and say things that were tough to accept. But people would endure it because it was sound doctrine. I need this. Yes, it's going against everything I learned growing up. Yes, it's going against all of my behavior. Yes, it's going against the way I act, all of that. But I'm going to endure it because I need sound doctrine. But the Bible said the time will come when they won't. When they'll be able to just sit at home and not listen to anyone. And pick the ones they want to hear. Because of their itching ears. That's this time. There's folks calling you now. Telling you to get out of that cult. And go where? Home. Home. Why they call us a cult? We were talking about that in the office. I, 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 I'm still trying to figure that narrative out. Do we come to church enough to be a cult? <laughs> Are the doors locked? Can y'all leave when you want to? <laughs> we serving Kool-Aid for communion? And all wearing Nikes? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> we homeschool, so you know black folks think that's a cult whenever you homeschool. That's a black thing. White people, you won't understand that. That's Negro dumb. Black folks think their kids are missing something if they homeschool. How they gonna grow up? Or they, I mean, they need to grow up around people. I mean, what they, what they gonna do? They, they gonna have no social skills. Uh, we have 200 kids in our, our 300. Thank you for correcting me. 300 kids in our homeschool co-op. That's more than a small elementary school. Well, it's just, <laughs> you just, people, it's just black people. That's us. Something wrong with it. Ooh, man, you. And then, yeah, now they shooting up all the schools, all this is happening. Now folks putting their kids out of school. Pandemic came, everybody got homeschooled. You got to meet the teacher for the first time on the screen. Yeah, because school became a daycare. It wasn't, that wasn't the original intention. School wasn't supposed to be a daycare. School was supposed to have active involvement. Public school was supposed to have active involvement, involvement from at least one of the parents. Amen. But now since most women have to work, school became a daycare. So no matter what the school does, they have to accept because I need the school to watch my kids. I know I'm preaching. I'm all over it. Amen. Our modern day church circuit has really become a sideshow. False teachers are on the rise and the people are at fault. It's the people's fault. The people's fault. Amen. It's the people's fault that this woman has a clergy collar on under a sweater. That's tacky and wrong. It's wrong and tacky. There's a lot wrong with that. Amen. Then the clown is really just... Amen. I'm not posing for a picture with a clown. Yeah. His watch is goofy. He's a clown. Second Peter 2 and 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Who are going to secretly bring in damnable heresies. False truths. And they aren't just false truths, but they're false truths that are damnable, meaning that will send you to hell. Yeah. You, they'll teach you things that will send you to hell if you believe it. Yeah. That's a damnable heresy. Yeah. Even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves what? Swift destruction. Swift destruction. 
Five signs that you are a false teacher. Five signs. Number one, celebrated by the world. The world loves them. That's, that's the first one. If the world loves you, something's wrong. The world's supposed to hate you. They're supposed to hate what you stand for because you're standing against them. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Number two, no teachings against sin and illicit behavior. Man, if you're defending the LGBTQIPXY359, if you're defending that, you're a false teacher. Amen. You're not teaching against that. And we don't just teach against the LGBT, we teach against all sin adultery, fornication, all of it, gossip, slander, everything the Bible names. Murderer. That's slander. Amen. So you got to teach against all sin. The person that don't teach against sin and just kind of patty cake and let everybody, you know, just, and they don't say it's sin. They go the opposite way and just say it's not your best. It's not God's best. We want, we want you to be, well, what is God's best? Well, you know. <laughs> just his best you know the best of the best <laughs> what what is his best is sin his best well you know it's, it's not his best but you know <laughs> what is best you got to preach against sin amen. amen you got to preach against the sins of the people you got to preach against sins you committing you got to preach against all sins because the bible sound doctrine teaches against sin Embrace the culture and mind earthly things. False teacher. Anybody embracing the culture? False teacher. Yeah. The leaven of Herod, that's embracing the culture. You more political than you are spiritual. That's a false teacher. Opportunistic and money and fame seeking. False teacher. Anybody looking to blow themselves up by preaching the gospel, that's a false teacher. Amen. Jesus did the opposite. He said, don't go tell the folks what I'm doing. So how can Christ be in you and you all about blowing up and being famous? Finally, teach and preach lies, fables, catering to the desires of the people. Yeah, you just keep changing. You keep changing. You look at the crowd and whatever the crowd is calling for, that's what you start preaching. Yeah, you see a lot of single ladies and they're the biggest givers in the church. So you stop preaching marriage. Yeah. See some of the kids, you know, you know they come from broken homes, so they look broken, and the boys won't cut their hair, and they wearing earrings, and the the the, the girls, you don't want to say nothing because you don't want to offend their parents. When you know that's gonna block their up, upward progress in life, and they're gonna be stereotyped. You don't care nothing about that. You don't care nothing about the spirit behind looking like that. It's hard to preach sound doctrine. It's hard. It's hard. You're going to get attacked. You're going to get, folks going to try to destroy you. They're going to try to end your life and end your ministry when you preach sound doctrine. They ended Jesus' life because he was sound doctrine. Ended all the disciples and apostles after him. Killed them, murderously killed them and destroyed them. Because they stood for sound doctrine. Yeah. Sound doctrine is going to make you unliked. Yeah. 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 That's why God don't call no punk. 
He's going to call those that'll die for it. That'll stand strong against it no matter who's coming against them. Those are the ones he calls. Amen. I'll never forget one time I was about to quit. One of the times. I said, man, I'm quitting. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me one night. I was, I was crying and snotting and ready to quit and everything. And he spoke to me. He said, you going to quit? I said, Lord, no, I'm just having a moment. You know I'm not going to quit. You know what the Holy Spirit spoke to me? He said, I wouldn't have called you if you were a quitter. That's the sign of whether you called or not. Amen. Ain't no books of the Bible started and then now somebody got to go find the rest of it. The book of Rufus. It's, it's, only, it's only a few chapters, you know, because Rufus quit. No, he don't call people like that. He don't call people that are quit. Amen. People said Paul would be turned. I mean, Paul, what am I doing? Paul said people would be turned to fables or lies in this day. They would rather accept the lie than take responsibility for the truth. It's easier. Second Timothy 4 and 4. And they say, you know, they, they don't want to accept the lie because it's like, you mean I've been doing it wrong all this time? Yes. So I guess I got to change everything. Yes. I can't do that. So they'll go find a preacher that'll preach what they're doing. So they don't have to change nothing. Man. They would rather accept the lie than take responsibility for the truth. 2 Timothy 4 and 4 says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. People have put the Bible down and are now listening to social media teachers that mix truth with lies and practice paganism and false god worship. This is who they're listening to now. Folks, send me this. Hey, man, check out what he said, man. Watch this. Said, I'm not listening to him. He's a false teacher. Well, yeah, some of the stuff he said, but this right here, I don't want to hear none of it. I don't have to hear it. God has called people to preach that. He's called a pure stream to preach that. There are people that are preaching that that are living what they're supposed to live and teaching what they're supposed to teach. I have to settle for no old weed head trying to tell me what's going to happen in the book of Revelations. Brother, comb your hair. Let's get a revelation on that. Get a revelation on some stay soft fro. Pull them naps out your head. Let's do a revelation on that. Let's get some breath mints for that weed breath. Take a bath before you preach the gospel. Brother, I don't need nobody hiding in a hole trying to tell me what the Bible says. They be sending me that all the time, man. Check this out, man. I look at him, I'm like, he like, yo, yo, the elite, y'all have no idea. Bill Gates, and, and he did that. I'm about to take that out. That ought to be a channel flag right there. But still, hey, I don't want to hear you. And don't nobody in it, don't send me nobody looking crazy. I don't want to hear what they got to say. I have a Bible I have a relationship with the Lord and I have a calling from the Lord so I don't need all of that foolishness oh earthy dudes I want to hear nothing from no old earthy dude But they done put the Bible down. Now they're just social media students. Anything that sounds like truth and agree with the narrative or against the narrative, they listen to it. Don't know these folks practice paganism and false God worship. Matthew 7 and 15. Beware of false prophets. 
Because they come to you in what? Sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they smoking weed. Because of the great exodus from the church during the pandemic, many are playing spiritual roulette. They watch multiple preachers on their feeds instead of submitting to the authority of a leader. People are vulnerable and easy prey for false teachings when they do not have a consistent voice speaking to their families. Amen. Today, many are becoming doctrinal deviants because they have no watchmen. Nobody to watch for. Nobody to watch for. Hebrews 13 and 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for what? Your souls. Your souls. Summary! <laughs> all believers in Christ must do what he says. Look at somebody and say, all believers in Christ believers must do what Christ says. We must learn and take heed to sound doctrine so we can check our behavior by his word. We must beware of false teachers that come to seduce us into believing lies for their own gain. Being filled with the Holy Spirit will keep us from falling into these doctrinal issues and will lead us to the right church and leader. The Holy Spirit will. It'll lead you to the right church and leader. Some of y'all, it led y'all to the right church, but it meant y'all hiring a U-Haul and packing some stuff up. Because there was a drought in the area you were in. Most of you in here moved here from out of state. You had to get where you could get the word. Has it benefited you? Was it a good decision? Do you like this cult? We'll be passing out Kool-Aid after service at the welcome center. <laughs> Kool-Aid pickles. It's the new cult. The ghetto, ghetto cult. Kool-Aid pickles with a lick -a maid stick. Ooh, that's so hood. Only the hood people knew what a lick -a maid stick was. Mm -hmm. That's bad when they give you candy powder and then something to get wet up and stick in it. Do more damage to your teeth. Remember the candy necklace? Yes. And you wear it all day and eat it when you get home? Bugs on it. <laughs> Walt's nest. When did he build that? Hey. All kind of neck crud. Because you know that's the nastiest part of your body when you're young. Your neck. <laughs> I don't know why. That's where all the sweat settles. But yeah, remember that? The, the, the candy necklace and the blow pop ring. Remember the ring? You just have it on like you just got married to candy. Your husband is Willy Wonka. Just... And when we were young, we dropped candy and just pick it up and eat it. I don't care how sticky it was. I don't care. We kiss it up to God. That's what we say, kiss it up to God. God be like, first of all, I don't... I suggest that you don't eat eat it in a good state. <laughs> Definitely don't eat it if you done dropped it. How did I get on this subject? <laughs> it was the Kool-Aid pickle. <laughs> <laughs> but we must learn to take heed to sound doctrine. So we can check our own behavior by his word and we must beware of false teachers that come to seduce us into believing lies for their own profit. They teach lies for their own gain. Being filled with the Holy Spirit will keep us from falling into these doctrinal issues and will lead us to the right church and leader. We must continue to obey, support, and pray for our leaders in the faith. Yeah. Obey, support, and pray for our leaders in the faith because right now it's very very hard to teach sound doctrine you got to stand up against your own family members and they all talk about you when you're not there and they celebrate you when you are there y'all that's my life we were just talking about that in the office 
They call me the cult leader, the new Jim Jones, all of that. But ain't nobody ever said that to my face. Ever. In my face. Oh, brother, you do. You're doing, you're doing a great work. A great work? What am I doing? What, what great work? You know, you got to explain it to me. I mean, what you doing over there, man? You doing, you doing things ain't nobody doing. It. I thought Jim Jones did it. People crazy. They do all of that celebrating. I mean, be hyping me up. See me at the mall or something. Ooh, G. Craig. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> yo, yo, you doing it. You doing it. <laughs> I'm doing what? What am I doing? <laughs> what, what part you like? What's the, what, what, what good part about it you like? But you got to do that. You got to fight against all of that to teach sound doctrine. To stand up for what is true, you got to go against your own family. Because they don't like the way you're doing it. Mm. Pray for the church leaders. Amen. Pray for our leaders in the faith. We must pray that God will continue to grant them insight into the coming delusions and false doctrines. That's what you pray for. You pray that I can help you through these end times. Amen. In this last hour, the truth will be made to look false. And the lies will be made to look true. That's why the internet was created. That's why social media was created. That's why AI is now being ushered in to make what is false look true and what is true look false. Watch and stand fast so that you will not be led astray. Amen? Sound doctrine part two. For the grace of God has been revealed bringing salvation to all people. And we, this is, look at somebody say, this is sound doctrine. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with what? Self-control, right conduct, and what? This is sound doctrine. While we look forward to that wonderful event, when the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed, he gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing what? It's a sound doctrine. You must teach Titus, pastors, leaders in this last hour. You must teach these things and encourage your people to do them. Correcting them when necessary. You have what? The authority to do this. So don't let anyone ignore you or disregard what you say everyone stand to your feet amen you'll never know how hard it is I was talking to my kids when we were in Chicago and we was talking about PKs and them being a PK and us being PKs and and then my daughter brought up the point with my wife saying, everybody always talk about church hurt, but nobody talks about pastor hurt. Most of these church hurt folks have hurt pastors even worse. 
when they don't say what they want him to say, do what they want him to do, hand them the mic, let them preach, sing, perform. When he tells them about himself, when he tells them, corrects them like the Bible says, they get upset. Go to the internet and talk about them. Try to end their ministry. Ain't nobody talking about pastor hurt. And what it takes to stand up and boldly proclaim the truth in 2023. Y'all know how hard that is? It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Because, I mean, the more folks come to this church, that ain't easy for me. I know y'all excited to tell folks, ooh, we got by 800, we doing by 800, we ran out of chairs. And I be thinking, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard. That's more folk, more problems, and then more devils, more Judases. More folks that will turn on you at the drop of the hat for their own convenience. Smile in your face. No, I wasn't quoting that. I was going to say smile in your face and stab you in the back. Somebody. It's altar call for all of those that. Quoted Eddie Levert's lyrics. Come on, come on. Spirit of Levert. OJs. No, but really though, people, they, they just, man, you saw them. Some of them was here. Acting happy. Until they got reprimanded. Now all of a sudden, it's all trash. That's hard. That's hard. I'm a father too, husband. I got a family. That's hard. Amen. So we got to pray for our leaders in this hour. Those that are courageous enough to stand for sound doctrine and teach the passages I just taught. Every message we preach in here has something to do with those passages I just gave you. I make sure this church is rooted and grounded in sound doctrine. Ain't nothing weird about ABC. Amen. Ain't nothing weird. I'm still trying to figure the cult thing out. Sound doctrine. So everybody bow your heads. I'm not going to call you up because I want you to pray for me. Amen. And I want you to pray for other leaders in the faith. Those that are standing for sound doctrine in this hour. Some of them may be your family members. You know preachers that are standing. You know people that are standing. Just get them in your mind and get them in your heart. And let's just pray. Let's just pray for those that are standing. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come down here and I'm going to have Elder Ken. Come on, Elder. And I'm going to let Elder Ken pray this prayer because I want to get in it. Pray for those of us that are in the faith that are standing in this last hour. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, you've told us to preach the word in season and out of season, even when people don't like it. And I pray, God, that you would bless our dear pastor as he stands in the gap for this body. Lord, we come against every demonic spirit that seeks to come against him and in his family and against this church he only does God what you have told him to do is to preach the word of God and Lord we thank you right now because you have found him worthy to stand in the gap and many souls have been saved because he dared to preach the gospel and Lord, we understand that we're dealing with the diabolical plots of the enemy that seeks to stand against what you have commanded. But with all authority and power that's in Jesus Christ, we stand in the strength and power of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we come against every diabolical plot of the enemy. And we pray that you continually strengthen him, God. Continually empower him. Continually empower us as a congregation to stand. 
and we thank you right now God we pray that you bless God each and every member in this church that will stand on the gospel of Jesus Christ and not take down Jesus you told us God you told us through the word of God if we would stand for you God many will be offended because we preach the truth of the word of God and Lord we pray we pray that you will ever be uplifted and magnified. We pray that you continually build a hedge around him and the family and this church as you build a hedge around Joe. Oh God, we thank you right now. For we know God, it is the gospel, it is the foolishness of preaching that saved us all. The word of God. You said before your word fell, heaven and earth will pass away. And we stand upon that truth, oh God. We stand upon the truth of the gospel. It was not entertainment in the church that saved us. It was the word of God that saved us all. And we thank you, God, that you brought us here for this time, for this hour, to stand in the gap with him and his family as we continue to go forth in the word. And we shall ever bless you, God. And we thank you and we know, God, that when we do as you ask, blessings follow us. And Lord, we just thank you. And we give you a big hand of praise, Lord. We magnify you for choosing us in this time and this hour. Hallelujah. We love you, God. We thank you for sound, biblical, Talk to me. We thank you.